Oh, wonderful memories. Peak population probably would have been close to 2,000. 800 or more people worked in the mill in its heyday. Almost 100 years we made blankets for Cannon Mills and Lady Pepperell. The Lando Moneta Mills History Center is a collection of southern mill village remnants and stories and pictures that have been collected over the years. Our goal is to preserve the history of Lando, the people that lived here, and tell the textile story. There were hundreds and thousands of mill villages throughout the South. But what is unique about Lando is the people. People donated the pictures, people donated the artifacts, people continue to donate stories. And we keep them all here and recreate them within these four walls within the History Center here in Lando. We have stories that date back to the early 20th century, telling how this mill village was created. The Heath family, when they came in as bankers out of Charlotte to start a defunct textile mill and recreate it into a thriving village. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody was kind and generous. No one had a lot of stuff. So whatever you had, you know, you shared with your neighbors and your friends. Just so many little things that tell a big story and you put them all together and it's all about continuing to preserve what was here. One of the biggest artifacts or favorite artifacts is we got the old payroll books. 1951, worked 24 hours, they made $22.55. This is a payroll card from 1970, and my dad, uh, Jack Yarber, was a loom fixer, and he made $110.80. As a historian, you want first-hand items. We have it here. This side over here is actually the president's office, would have been Harry Heath's desk. You can see some of the relics that would have been in the company office at the time. I grew up in Lando. Probably 90% of the people on the walls here I grew up with or their fathers are here and it's really heartwarming to see that all this was reserved and conserved. This museum means the world to my generation. I was born in 55 and Mr. Heath had a birth log and I can go and look up my birth date. My dad got a silver dollar when I was born. Those kind of memories you cannot duplicate. Everybody lives in a mill-owned house. We have recreated several rooms, what a mill house kitchen would have looked like, a living room. Your rent was tied to your paycheck, five cents a room or 25 cents a room at the end. We have the schoolhouse, we have the doctor's office. Dr. Gaston was here and he'd do whatever you needed to be done to take care of it right then and then on payday you'd pay him back. We have a room dedicated to the barbershop. Barbershop existed in every mill village where everybody went on Saturdays to get your hair cut. They had a bandstand, they had music and sports. They provided a baseball stadium, a baseball field. This is the company store where you come to get your mail, buy meat, whatever you need to do. You bought it at the company store and paid for it on payday. When money got scarce back in the depression, the mill made its own currency and you spent it here in the company store. It was called a loony. Was it a perfect life? No. There was many, many problems in every community that existed. But this was a community where you watched after each other. Come see how a textile mill village was back in the day. It's just a great place to look back in time for our memories and we want future generations to know what it was like growing up in the early 1900s. Thanks for watching, and if you don't want to miss any more great regional stories, please subscribe to our PBS Charlotte YouTube channel.